Welcome to the Hacking Your Health podcast with Ben Canning and Dave Kennedy. Two guys heading out to hack body, mind, business, and beyond. We are here to provide a single source, bullshit-free guide to understanding your body and how you can live better for longer. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, I'm Ben Canning. And I'm Dave Kennedy. And this is Hacking Your Health Podcast. Yes, this is going to be... Been practicing, a... I've been practicing that in the mirror. I've been practicing that in the mirror. That was so really good. Sure I, I mean, I feel like you even had a look at everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could tell, you could tell you've been looking in the mirror as you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So what's going on? What's up? Well, I think we should say, what's going on with you, man? You're, you're throwing some heavy-ass weights over there. I'm jealous as hell of uh, the progress you've made over the past few months. And uh... Do you know what? This is actually, this is actually a, good, a good point to note. I have this, like, sometimes I just switch it on. So, like, I can, like, maintain and I'm fine and that's fine. And then something happens or I'm like, shit, right, right, it's really time to double down on things and really push things. I mean, whenever I switch it on, this, like, it happens. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. some of the, like, I am genuinely putting up some weight that, all time PRs like weights I've never lifted before, and I feel fucking good doing it. And another point that I'm actually going to note, I I I don't know if you can see it. there have my bike. I can't right see. I can see like a little bit of a bike. I think I think that's the is that that's the seat. seat. Okay, that's the seat. Okay, yeah. It's okay. It's I just okay. see like a little yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. So I did twenty minutes on that. Number one, it was the longest fucking twenty minutes of my life. But number two, I got into a cold bath after, which I know you would hate. But see, whenever I, I got out of that cold it. bath, I felt absolutely incredible for the rest of the day like i felt i felt so so good all day so i'm kind of excited for what cardio is going to bring to my life alongside everything that i'm doing with training and whatever else but aside from being stronger than you than in many lifts <laughs> other things that are going are i Wait, finally i, I don't, know, don't, don't know about many i don't know about many no no about many you got me on one can't. you got me on one so far what are you talking about you got me on one lift so you far which i'm gonna break next week come anyway. on and bro you can't come on and brag whenever you lift more than me and then whenever i say it, it's like no fuck you yeah, but you said many lifts like you're, you're exaggerating well, at least i only claimed two, i did at least that, what's, two. This, what's the second one what that you talking about the 110 pound the dumbbells, dumbbells? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't dumbbells have have I don't have 110 <laughs> <about> dumbbells <laughs> <laughs> but yes aside from that aside from that a couple of things that are going on actually uh, i finally finished the new onboarding process um, for clients, which I'm going to get you all to do uh, at some point over the next couple of weeks, just to go nice. through the process, which I think is very cool. Maybe it's just me. Um, and I also started recording the exercise execution library today, which I think will be another cool addition to everything that we're doing. So it's all good here. You know, it's interesting. Uh, whenever I see videos of you do uh, exercises or lifts, like I learn something new every single time. So like, uh, you know, the rack pulls, for example, I think you did a, a tweet recently about, you know, um, you, you basically had showed you know, your lift for that cycle, you know, I think you did maybe four sets or something like that. And each time you did, you increased substantially in weight, you know, your form and technique was exactly the same every time. Tempo, everything was exactly the same every single time, right? And, you know, I think that's something that that kind of resonated with me. So when I was doing my rack pulls, even though I didn't get 515, um, you know, I, I, I really focused. Heavy, on, it's heavy. Like it is freaking heavy. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, to me, it seems like an immutable object that at this point in time, where I like, you yeah. know, I showed you the video. I'm just stuck like, to the floor, ah, like super ah, magnets. Ah, <laughs> nothing's moving. I'm like, ah, this sucks. This isn't even possible. I'll get there. I'll get there. But, um, but uh, you know, it, it's funny because I, I really focus very heavily on on tempo and form and everything else as I was doing my rack pulls, and it just, you know, feels a lot better. You know, when you went down, you know, you you keep the bar very close to your legs as it's, you know, you ride your legs down basically over the the hump of your uh, knee and then down just a little bit below your, your, your kneecap and then, you know, ride it back up again and then kind of lock the, you know, things back, pause, and then, you know, come back down. And, you know, it's consistent throughout all of the uh, sets and reps that you were doing throughout there. So I think, you know, like the videos that you're going to be putting out are, I think it'd be really good for, for, you know, consistency, form and technique, which is, you know, you're the, you're the best at. So I, like I said, I think I, I said this in another podcast, I think I finally got my incline bench press down after a year of you working did. with you. you. So, but you it did. takes a lot of time to get but even with that. Even with that, you know, the, as I was going through it today, there's so many coaching cues and things that I take for granted because I've, I've done it this way for so long. So trying to 
break it down in a way that wasn't totally complicated that you guys are going to be watching it being like, what the fuck's he talking about? But it's sort of the same sort of things to look out for every single lift. So like position, stability, where your shoulders are, you know, where you're moving, what your range is and things like that. So it's important to be able to think about those things and you don't necessarily get it until you actually see it. And I think the, the video that I posted with the rack pulls was quite a good one because even if you look at the video, like down to where my feet were, it is exactly the same. Do you mean yeah. like you can oh, tell yeah. that the bar was changing weight? So I obviously yeah. had to go away, put the bar and do everything yeah. I needed to do, but it just comes from over time and practice and reps and reps and reps. And I think that is why I so heavily focus on form because whenever I do get to weights that I've never lifted before, I can manage it because my body moves in exactly the same way. I'm stable. I'm stable. I actually, whenever I was going, I was training with Helmy yesterday. And I, he was doing some ridiculous weight in the dumbbells. And I was like, right, I think I'm going to do the 50 kilos, which is 110 pounds. I was looking at them. I was like, Fuck, I feel a bit nervous. And he was like, this is the way it should be. And I was like, okay, okay. But I was, but I mean, it was fine because the yeah. movement was exactly the same. So that's why I'm excited about doing the exercise execution library for you guys. So that you can see it with coaching tips, seeing me do it, seeing me pause, seeing me point things out. So it'll be cool. I think it's an important topic. I'll tell you my, my number one biggest pet fee peeve that I just, it drives me up the effing wall. You know, you always hear like people mansplaining things and doing this other stuff. You know, like whenever I, I, I post a picture of me lifting, you know, you get fucking all of these people. And I, I was going to use less F word. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, you get all these, my wife is like, seriously, use that word. I'm not going um, to. <laughs> I'm going to try to limit mine a little bit. Um, but you get all, you know, you get like 10 people like, oh, you should buy these shoes or you should do this or you should, you know, yeah. tweak your thing this way or that way. And a lot of times it's extremely bad advice. Like um, I was looking at the, I was on the dad bod transformation every time. And uh, someone, you know, um, posted a picture of their bench press. And it was literally perfect. You know, like it was like it looked looked really solid, perfect, great weight. You know, you could tell the guy had spent a lot of time uh, on form. And, and you know, uh, one thing that he does, which is very common in the powerlifting side, is he, you know, arches his back substantially as he's going up to create that arch, right? And that's proper form and technique. Now, was that proper form and technique 15 years ago? Probably not, you know, um, but but it is now. And, you know, and, and there's a lot of science behind arching your back when you're going and doing a, a bench press. And all these people are like, don't arch your back. You're going to hurt yourself and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm like, no, no, you're not. Like, don't listen to these guys. Like, you, your, your bench press looks fucking awesome. I wish I could. There's another F word again. Uh, you know, like, it looks great. You know, you shouldn't be doing that. So the thing I hate the most is when people just give you advice. And I'm like, I'm not looking for advice. Sorry. Like, you know, I, I get confused when I have five people saying, hey, you should do it this way. You should do it that way. You should do it this way. You should do it that way. You know, find somebody that you trust to look at your form. And uh, we have, if you go to our Discord server, it's um, discord.gg slash hacking your health. There is a form, you know, for free, there's a form, you know, channel where you can post your form and, and have some great folks, you know, uh, commenting and talking on it. Ben will obviously comment and talk on it. So, you know, like form is, is so, so, so important to ensure that you're not hurting yourself. Uh, you're not doing improper techniques to you know, tweak your back, your, you know, quads or legs, or whatever, you know, doing things the appropriate way is extremely important uh, as you go through this, and that mind muscle body connection, all of those things are things that you continuously want to improve on as you're going through and doing those lifting. But I hate my biggest pet peeve is getting feedback from people. I just did on Facebook and you know, I did a solid 505. By the way, that was a solid 505 deadlift, you yeah, know, like, yeah, like, yeah. like I yeah, mean, yeah. it wasn't yeah. my, my, my first deadlift I did was really rocky. And, you know, it was kind of wobbly and I, I, and it was from the floor cause it was the trap bar. So yeah. you were lifting from the floor. It didn't have the higher wheel. So yeah, it was, it yeah. was good. Yeah. And, and I was really proud of that one. And someone's like, oh, you should get these shoes cause you're losing a lot of power. You should do this and you should do that. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't care what you have to say. I just deleted the, the post. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, thank you. I didn't ask for advice. I, I appreciate it, but I'm not listening. You know, and I, and I do the same thing. I, I, if someone is, is posting their, their lift. I say amazing job, awesome job. I don't provide feedback. I don't sit there and say, hey, you should do this or you should go and do that unless they ask me for some specific opinions on, hey, you know, form check. You know, that that's an open invitation to go and do it. But but guys and gals, please don't give me any form kind of, you know, feedback or other people form feedback if they're not looking for it. It pisses us off. That's more my than job. Anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I got I got somebody <laughs> that does job. that. I got somebody that does that. All right. <laughs> you should see me a year I ago to this... now. You want to you want to tweak me? <laughs> Look at a year ago from now and be like, okay, I'm not going to touch that. Okay, it's, it's, that's a thousand times better than what it was. <laughs> I think the thing the thing about improper technique and and poor form, you can only get away with it for so long. Do you know what I mean? Like you'll yeah. be fine, you know, at lighter weights and whatever else. Yeah. But whenever you start to progress with it, if you're not lifting properly, if you're not stable, if you're not moving the right muscle, you're going to fuck yourself up in some way, shape or form. And it will come back to bite in the ass really badly. So 
like take it back and even I've I've had conversations with a couple of clients recently they're like oh, I felt like I was going to take it back to just sort of like re-get into form because you can get so caught up in progress and more weight and, and more reps which is obviously the name of the game and part of the process but you still need to be in line with your form and make sure that you're getting it Um, so you know sometimes taking it back to sort of go right I need to get the tempo I need to get what I'm feeling here and actually sometimes you benefit more from doing a slightly lighter weight because you get a much better contraction through your whatever the muscle is well, that's that's a common technique too. If you you know you're you're struggling at a certain weight, you know to to go back down a lot in weight and and really focus on your form and technique and, and making sure that you're doing things proper. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, if I if I'm pulling really really heavy weight, and I'm just not having any success. I'll go lower for a while. Really focus on form, technique, repetition. You know, higher higher volume, and uh, you know start to to build that up again over time. And and things that I, I notice that I'll, I'll you know like um, form is number one. So like when I'm doing uh, lateral raises, right. There's actually a few different ways to do lateral raises, okay? So, you know, you can ha kind of have the jerking motion lateral raise, which is going to work your traps and your shoulders. And, and there's there's a, a point of that in going heavy in that. But really, you know, you want to go lighter weights and really focus on, you know, going up and going down for that time under tension. And <clears throat> I'll notice that, you know, I'm like, well, shit, I'm only doing 20 pounds here. I need to, like, go to 35. And then, you know, my, my form doesn't look great. And so I cut back down again to go back to that size. So, you know, weight doesn't equate to everything. Just because you can lift the weight doesn't mean that you're doing it appropriately. And as you get heavier, especially when we start getting into really heavy weights where you can seriously damage yourself if you don't have proper form, you know, getting these down sooner than later is, is critical. You sent me a video um, <clears throat> when I first started trading. And it was, it was I think it was when I first got my, uh, my barbell. And I had two 45 pound bumpers and I'm doing uh, deadlifts off of it. Right. And, and I'm like, literally it's 135 pounds and I'm like struggling my ass off at 135 pounds. I'm like, man, oh man, what is that even, <laughs> I don't remember those days. It was so long ago. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I remember going and doing those and I'm looking at my form. I'm like, you know, if, if I was pulling 505 with that, I would have completely ripped my back out of place, you know, like, the, you know, cause yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not arching my back at a neutral spine position. You know, I'm not coming up the appropriate way. I'm not, you know, resting and pausing and coming down and breathing appropriately. There's a lot of things that I did wrong. And so, you know, getting those foundations down right and even going back a bit to set, you know, to reset yourself on those, I think is extremely important so that you don't have major injuries going forward. If you're getting hurt yeah, or something, I, don't do it. Yeah. yeah, it's plain and simple. Um, I think a good point to note in that, and, and what I sort of mentioned before, you know, obviously I tweaked my back doing deadlifts and it was just a stupid weight, whatever, that, that's fine. But, you know, there was a lesson there and I did have to go, I, I had to go back and wait because I couldn't physically lift the weight because of the pressure on my lower back. So I went back, I slowed everything down, I relearned the movement, I got a better connection through hamstring, glutes and back. And that's what's led me to now where, like I've never lifted that weight in rack pull before. I'm back up to the weight that I was doing, you know, all time high in terms of RDLs and stuff like that. And they feel great. So going back and relearning and doing that movement and getting the movement and the right muscles moving again has definitely helped me then become stronger down the line. So yeah, the lesson, that's the lesson from putting your back out. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's interesting. Um, if you can avoid it, please, <laughs> please do. Dude, it's the worst. I, I recently pulled my back out, which, you know, I have, um, it, it my area, my issue is, Stretching is a big, big issue for me. And, I, and I've really been spending a lot of time stretching myself because my, my IT band gets really, really tense and sore to where I can't move appropriately. I range of motion goes down. And then it affects, you know, my quads, my legs, and my most specifically, it, it tightens up my back. And so um, one thing that I, I focus on is, you know, when I'm lifting, I focus very heavily on proper form and technique. But when I'm not lifting and I'm lifting just, you know, stuff around the house, I don't focus on proper form and technique. So I was lifting a, a you know a baseball pitching machine that probably weighed fifty pounds, and I pulled my back out uh, because of it. You know, and I didn't bend at the knees. I didn't you know lift appropriately in any way, shape, or form. I literally just put all the weight on my back, <clears throat> and it was an awkward position because I was kind of sideways and it was awkward. You know, so it kind of tweaked my back out, and it caused sciatica. You know, it caused um, you know my whole leg to to basically hurt. And it's still you know like um, luckily the pain's gone now, but for for months it was lingering. You know, in myself so. You know, you also want to apply the same techniques that you learn in lifting when you're doing things around the house or picking things up or helping a friend move, you know, picking things up, you know, like you would do a squat or like you would do a deadlift, uh, you're like, you know, are the ways that you want to start focusing on this instead of trying to tweak yourself and, you know, muscle it up because you've been lifting all the time. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yo, what's up, everybody? Uh, I want to interrupt this broadcast to bring you some important information. This Friday, the 4th of February, we will be hosting our first Spaces 
live on Twitter. So 12 p.m. EST, 5 p.m. GMT. Join us on Twitter. We're doing an open floor discussion. We're doing a Q and A, and we're going to give away the details of our first competition. So not to be missed. I'll catch you there. So anyway, how are things with you? Hey, hey, things are great with me. Uh, I'm still jealous of your your 506 uh, pound. Uh, so I, you know, it's, it's funny. I just, I'll tell you the, the quick story there. You know, I'm like, ah, Ben did 506. I'm like, I can do a 505 pound deadlift. I'm sure that uh, a rack pull is going to be no big deal. So, you know, instead of doing 505 or 506, I'm going to go 515 um, just to show him up so that, you know, I don't, you know, I, I can, you know, one up Ben. And I get it. I'm just like, huh, huh. And I tried it. I started seeing stars. Like, you know, like I got light ahead. And I'm like, oh shit, this isn't going to work. You know, <laughs> so then I tried a second time. I didn't send you the second video, but <laughs> you know, it, it definitely wasn't moving. So. But uh, no, things are good on my end. Uh, training's been going really good. Um, we had a new trainer. Well, so at, at Orange Theory, I do Orange Theory Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for cardio, and then I lift in the, the afternoons. And um, for for we had this this trainer Jackie who's like super motivating and all sort of stuff. She's like she's like a fireball of energy. I don't know how she does it. I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but uh, she she creates competition with yourself. So she you know like she knows I'm a strong rower and runner and everything else. And so on the rower, she's like. Yeah, we're, we're not going to do the, the program that we normally do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the program so that you have to do 200 meters in 25 seconds, which is ridiculous. And so I'm there just like, ah, 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 you know, and the, the whole thing's like popping up and she's got to stand on it because the thing's like lifting up and everything. And, you know, like, so today I, I, I definitely destroyed myself. I was, I was 10 minutes extra in the higher heart rate that I normally do, uh, which is just a good, you know, hey, I got a great workout today, which means I need to really go take a nap after this podcast. Um but uh, no, things are going really good. Training's going good. Very happy with everything. I saw uh, you know there was obviously um, a bit of chat going on about rolling times in the group chat. And for a while, whenever I worked in the gym floor, like I was quite into very short distance rowing and beating my time, like 150, 200, 250 meters. And I think I could come for some of your times. Like I don't have access to a row machine at the minute, but I will before I get over there because I feel like I could definitely Listen. put some good numbers up. I'm not saying we're... I'm going to beat you, but I can put some good numbers up. <laughs> we are definitely going to go. And we can go pound for pound. Like, yeah. well, it's it's funny uh, when you get there. It's gonna. It's. I, I think you're gonna enjoy it because it's it's. You know, like like I'm not a. I, I don't like doing long distance cardio or anything like that. There's enough things broken up in between all of it that it really doesn't like feel like you're doing an hour of cardio at all. <clears throat> you know, there's so many things going like gym and rowing and you know, in between rowing, you know, you're doing. Um, you know, squats with a medicine ball and putting it above your head, you know, so you're doing a lot of other things too. So, you know, it breaks it up a lot, but I'm definitely going to put you through the ringer when you get here. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell the trainers that. Why do you, uh, think, you, I, why do you think I got the bike? <laughs> I need to have some sort of fitness. Like, that's, that's why I got it. <laughs> I'm still going to destroy you though. Right. <laughs> that's okay. You can win that one because yeah, that's totally fine. Right. So today we are going to talk a bit about struggles. Now, this obviously came off the back of um, a question posted in the Discord and someone asked us to sort of touch on depression and things like that. And after having a conversation with Dave, both of us sort of decided that, thankfully, you know, I've never experienced it myself um, and, you know, Dave is saying, like, and I think, you know, it wouldn't be fair of us to be able to speak directly about that. Um, I do think that it would be worthwhile for us to get on somebody who can talk professionally about it. We can have actual conversations about, you know, the ins and outs of it and, and how to overcome and like that sort of process. But I don't think it'd be right for us to be able to have that conversation. But my experience as a coach, I've obviously worked with people who have suffered from depression and I've seen the benefits of, of training and, and good nutrition. And, you know, I have been able to help people overcome, you know, coming off their antidepressants and things like that. So I have that side of the experience. And I think if we're able to talk about that, but also, you know, our own struggles, um, I think we'll be able to give a bit of an insight as to the things that we struggle with over time and, and how we've been able to overcome them. Yeah, just just to add to that, to what Ben said, you know, I think depression is a, a very important topic. And I know a lot of folks really struggle with that throughout their, through, throughout their entire life and, you know, ebbs and flows of life and going through horrible challenges. And, you know, some days may feel like there's worse than others. You know, the, the, the whole concept for me is I try to have as many net positive days as I possibly can that outweigh the negatives. And that, that goes for training. You know, that goes for how I eat. That goes for my family and my life. So my, my whole goal is, you know, every day wake up trying to make that day a good day, right? And the more good days I have, the better good days that I'm going to have overall, and the better I'm going to feel about myself and the more positive energy I'm going to have around me. And that's, that's kind of the mentality that I have with training. You know, it's, 
you know, not every day I go to training, I feel great, right? You know, I don't feel, you know, 100% motivated where I'm just going to PR every single time. Monday's a good example of that. I, uh, chest days are my favorite days to go and do. And I just, you know, I was, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm close to really needing a deload week. I really am. Uh, and I know, uh, I know. <laughs> It's, it, you know, and, and you, I can feel my body is, is a bit, you know, wore down. And, and that's that's when you need to, you know, take a break. And so next week I'm going into a deload week. But Monday I went into it like kind of dragging ass, right? And and that's a training day where, you know, I didn't do as best as I possibly could. No, I still put the work in. I still trained. I, you know, did as, as hard as I could on that one. Conversely, Tuesday, some something got into me and I was on a whole different level. I think I was just trying to beat Ben, you know, and, it, and that kind of spiked me up and to, to go into something different. So, you know, not every day is a perfect day. Not every day is going to be something that, that, you know, is going to be the best day that you've ever had, whether it's weight training or anything else. But the whole purpose of why we're doing this right is to feel better and, you know, to feel better about ourselves personally, our, you know, perception of how we look, how we feel, but also the impact that um, healthy lifestyles have on your mental capacity, your mind, your positivity. It, it literally changes every aspect of your life. And I'm just going to, one of my buddies uh, message me just asking, you know, hey, you know, I'm doing really good at training, but I've kind of hit a plateau. What do you think about this? And how would you train, you know, uh, you know, do this? You know, my first response is, hey, you should really go look at Ben. But, uh, you know, my second response is, hey, um, you know, like, I'm like, what's what's the biggest difference that you've seen since you've been consistently training for about six months now? And I'm just going to read you his last his last sentence. He's like, the biggest thing, though, uh, is that by going to the gym six or seven days a week, I just have so much more energy and I feel so much better about myself. And, and that's, that's why we're doing this, right? You know, we're doing this so that we feel better about ourselves as we age or, or as we, you know, in our twenties or thirty, whatever it ends up being, you know, it's, it's really to make ourselves uh, feel good, you know, and, and have a good life and, and sustainable life. And one that we can be there for kids and have energy for our families and things like that. Um, so, you know, while we're not going to be touching specifically on how to address depression, because, you know, that's not our area of expertise and that's not something we feel comfortable with. I think we can absolutely talk to you, how do we motivate ourselves? And, and when, we were, we, when we were going through struggles, how do we get out of those struggles so that we can continue to do what we want to do to feel good about ourselves, our bodies, and to continue on this healthy lifestyle, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think it's a funny thing that I've heard a couple of clients say before, and you know, they talk about issues they're going through or, or struggles that they've had. And they'll always say, oh, but X person is going through this. And I think there, there's almost like that comparison of people think that their struggles or the things that they're dealing with aren't as bad as other people's. But, you know, from my experience, whatever your biggest struggle or whatever your biggest trauma is, that's the biggest one to you. Whether it seems more extreme or less extreme to other people, it's irrelevant because it's the biggest sort of trauma or struggle that you've had to go through yourself. And I think recognizing that is, is definitely an important thing. Um, as you sort of said, you know, there's definitely been different times throughout my training career and my coaching career that I've struggled with different things and potentially they may not seem big now whenever I look back or they may not seem like a big deal and they may seem, you know, small to other people. But at that time, it was the biggest thing that I was going through and it was, you know, a struggle that I had, uh, whatever it was, like I said, whether it was, you know, with training or whether it was with business or, or clients or whatever it is. So I definitely think that there's, you know, struggles that we've all been through, but how we've actually been able to overcome them and, and how we've been able to sort of use training and nutrition, use, you know, discipline, use a positive mindset, use gratitude, you know, all these sort of things that I recommend and even the her the very hippie shit that I talk about um, and how they benefit, you know, longer term. Um, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for all that stuff, stuff that I do myself. Like I'm not, I never recommend anybody to do anything that I'm like, yeah, I think you should do this because it'll make you feel better, but I'm not fucking going to do it. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said sort of on the small things that you do to sort of help you have more positive days, like you said. Yeah, the the I like, I like the aspect you hit on that, that the biggest thing that you're going through is the biggest thing you're going through. And, it, it, and it's not a comparison to anybody else. It, you know, it's the same thing for like weight training. It's like I don't compare myself to anybody else is body type or muscles or anything to that effect, except when I'm beating Chris all the time. But other than that, I don't compare myself to anybody else, right? You know, your body is yours. Um, and, and your mind is yours. Your, your life is yours and your struggles are yours, right? And whether your struggle is, you know, on a Richter scale one to 10, you know, it's a, at a three, that's a struggle that you're going through, right? And that's a struggle that you 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 have identified that it is. And, and some some folks are going through Richter ten scale ten, you know, um, you know, uh, issues within their lives or struggles. 
And so, you know, the struggles that, that you're going through, you, you have to focus on and address and change, you know, patterns of behavior and things that you're doing to get yourself out of that. Right. And I think when you look at uh, something like, like, uh, you know, weight training or nutrition and things like that, the, the biggest struggle I think that, that people think of is they, they look at, you know, folks like you, Ben, or myself or, or others, and they say, well, you know, I need to get to that tomorrow, right? Like I need to start that doing this right now. And it, that's not the case, right? You know, this is something that, you know, that we've built up on over years to get to a certain position that we're in comfortably with our bodies and understanding our bodies and things of like that and, and, and creating habits around that to, to make that successful, right? Um, whereas if you're just starting on this journey, making small changes uh, can create big long-term benefits for you in, 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 in you know, for, for yourself very, very quickly, as well as very much on the long-term side of the house. So I think, you know, when you start talking about struggles, you know, if you have a struggle where you've just eaten too many calories one day, well, it's just one day, right? Or if it's been two days, okay, it's just two days. Get back onto that train of doing things the appropriate way. Last night, Ben's going to see in my check-in, I, I had one of those days where I was playing video games and I had a bunch of Cheez-Its. I couldn't help it, you know, and I went over my calories yesterday. All right. It's, it happened, you know, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get shit from it, but you know what? It was my choice. And you know what I'm going to do today? I'm not going to eat Cheez-Its today, you know, and I'm going to get back onto that, that bandwagon, uh, you know, of doing things appropriately, um, <clears throat> you know, because it's, it's something that I don't want to make that a habit. I'm trying to break that habit. It's a tough one. You know, wheat thins and Cheez-Its, man. They're the best. You still um, buy them? That's the solution. You I know. But, so so I, I stopped nice. buying them, but then Aaron bought them. And then I was like, listen, you can't buy these anymore. But I still got like two boxes in the house. So like they're just still you – know, I'm, I'm working on them. The, the last two boxes. The last two boxes in the house. I'm not buying anymore, right? But the kids like Cheez-Its. So then like it's like, okay, well, you know. They're not getting any either. <laughs> yeah, they're not getting any Cheez-Its either. So, but, uh, you know, like it, it's those habits I think that, that we need to start looking at breaking very slowly over time and start to create new patterns that allow us to get out of those struggles, right? Yeah, and it is the, you know, it's an overtime thing and it's not something that, that's going to happen overnight. Um, one of the one of the biggest struggles I think that I've had, both from a just a training perspective and a coaching perspective, is a bit of imposter syndrome and uh, always having to feel like I need to live up to look and be a certain way. Because, you know, the whenever I first started training, back, I think it was about six or seven, maybe eight years ago, the very following year, I did a photo shoot. It was just for something to work towards. I think I was going on holiday just after it, and I wanted to obviously be in really good shape. So, I, I mean, great achievement. I did it. I was absolutely shredded. I was way more fake tan than you can ever imagine. And <laughs> I look great. Like, I, I genuinely, you know, I did. I look great. And, you know, being able to go back to this is where I started a year and a half ago or whatever and compare it was great. But... <sighs> Whenever I went on the holiday, I went absolutely off the fucking rails. I put on so much weight and I came back, I think about three or four weeks later, and I was like heavy as hell. I was like carrying too much body fat. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I, I really struggled with the fact that I wasn't as lean as I was before. I wasn't getting the same attention. I was putting up these photographs on Instagram of like, oh yeah, here's my photo shoot that I did, you know, four weeks or six weeks ago, but I no longer look like that. So I was struggling with these real body image issues. Um, and then obviously moving into the coaching side of things, you know, from the imposter syndrome standpoint, there's the the days that I want to go and binge out on food. And I'm like, oh, I can't really do that because I can't be saying to you, you know, you can't go and do X, Y, and Z. And then around, I'm doing it in the house. And the same thing about looking a certain way. And I, I touched on this before on Twitter that, you know, I don't feel like coaches need to be walking around absolutely shredded all year round, but I definitely think that they need to have, you know, lifestyle choices and maintain some sort of level of being able to train whatever the capacity it is. So, you know, being able to overcome that, that I don't need to be a certain way because, you know, my job depends on it. It's not really like that. I think it's the, the being, be, having been through the process and having a bit of an understanding, but uh, there was definitely a while as the, I think it was probably when I was mostly in the gym floor because I was, you know, in that environment with other trainers and they were doing X, Y, and Z. And I was like, shit, right. Do I deserve to be here? Do I deserve this? And that was just the sort of negative self-talk rabbit hole that I, I took myself down. Now I am absolutely fine. Like I know I'm not the leanest I've ever been and that's okay. Cause that's not the, the, the stage in my training career that I'm at. I'm working towards something else. So it just sort of took me a while to actually get out of it and get an understanding of me and different stages of training and knowing that I'm not always going to be here. I'm not always going to be there. And as I said to you before, you go through that, like when you're leaner, you want to be bigger. When you're bigger, you want to be leaner. And you're having this like mental argument with yourself on a daily basis. Um, 
so yeah, something something that I've been treated up. You know, I um, <clears throat> that's the one thing I struggle with as well. You know, as you know, Ben, I I, I got pretty lean after my surgery, um, and that was probably the leanest I've been, you know, for for quite a long time. And you know, while I liked how I looked, I was like, man, I want to I want to be bigger, right? And so, you know, we got bigger, but then I'm like, well, hey, I'm getting too much body fat, so I need to shrink this down. But one thing I do, I think I, I like that you said is, you know, um, there was a picture I think I sent you a couple weeks ago, and, and, and you're like, this is something that we can maintain, you know, pretty much, you know, throughout the year as you start to, to bulk up and build and things like that, because I want, obviously I want to continue to grow muscle size, but I also want to be able to see, you know, visible abs and, you know, um, you know, look, look good with the shirt off and all that, but not be completely shredded, which I'm, which I'm fine with. Um, and that, that balance of, still continuing to build muscle, get bigger, but also still have a relatively lean figure, um, I think is, is really important to me. And that's a struggle that I look at all the time. It's, it's like, you know, when, depending on what lighting you have and, you know, what you're looking at, you know, you're like, hey, that's a good picture. That, that's a horrible picture. I'm not sending that one, you know. And it's hard because, like, I am just as pale white as you can possibly imagine. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, and, and I've tried the fake tan, but I, I screw it up every time where I have, like, like these brown knuckles all around here, you know. And it's just, you know, everybody's like, well, use gloves. But then, like, then you have like a tan here and then your whole hand is white. So everybody knows you've been, you know, self tanning. I just, I'm like, I'm not going to try tanning anymore. This stuff sucks. Nah, best to stay away. Best to stay away from it. <laughs> nah, I'm good. But, uh, um, you know, the, but those, you know, the struggles that, that I have, again, probably Richter 10 scale of a one in comparison to, you know, other folks, but that's something that I struggle with, you know, body image all the time. I, I, I still very much see, you know, a, a heavier set Dave in my pictures a lot. It's very hard for me to actually send new pictures out to people because I still see kind of a bigger Dave, even though I know I'm muscular and I look better and all this other stuff. So you know, it's these little internal things that I struggle with too, um, that, that make it difficult for me to get past. But, but in stating that, you know, listen, uh, yeah, again, these things don't happen overnight, right? You know, these aren't things that are going to be fixed just by going to the gym one day or, you know, eating, you know, a salad and, and kale and all this other stuff, you know, or getting on the keto diet. Um, you know, they're not, it's not going to happen, um, overnight, these are things that, you know, you start to build, you know, rituals around, you start to bring, bring, bring habits around and you have more better days than you, you don't, uh, you, then you, you do bad and, uh, things start to really change. I think perception wise of, of yourself and everything else. Right. Yeah. I think one of the, one of the most important things that, that I've touched on a couple of times with clients recently is how they actually speak to themselves. So if you imagine you were talking to a loved one or a friend or whatever, the way that you speak to them is generally quite positive, uplifting and whatever else, but people are so like, they'll speak so negatively about themselves and they'll yeah. speak themselves in a certain way that will literally bring them down. But that becomes your narrative. Like, you know, whatever it is, like I'm a failure, I'm this, I'm overweight I'm blah, 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 blah. If you start to sort of reframe that and speak to yourself in a, in a different sort of way, it will definitely help the, the sort of thought processing and come out the other side of it. And I think, you know, having as well, you know, a, a good support network, whether it's, you know, something like we have in the, in the wider discord or something that we have in the, in a tighter knit family chat and whatever else, like being able to sort of share number one struggles, but also like, if you're having a shitty day, you can go in there and you know, there's 10, 15, 20 other people that will sort of bring you up or be able to relate and having a shitty day or whatever else. Yeah. And the flip side of that as well is, and you know, not to blow my own trumpet on it, but you know, the, there's fans that come to me, like I'm having a shit day and you've been one of them. Like I'm having a shitty day, you know, I've done this or I haven't done that, blah, 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 blah. And I can come back to them with one or two things. Number one, if they need a bit of tough love, they'll get it. But number two, if it's like, okay, right, well, it's only been one day, you know, the past eight weeks, you've been absolutely immaculate with everything that you've done. Like stop giving yourself such a fucking hard time. It's more about, as you said, having more better days than worse days. And, you know, at the end of the day, Unfortunately, I don't like to admit it, but we're all humans. So they are, we are going to go through these things and we are going to have good, we're good days and shit days. And it's, it's about not focusing on the bad days and recognizing that it's just a small amount of time in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And, and, you know, all of us have, you know, habits that we've, we've created throughout our entire lives that turn into bad habits, turn into good habits, turn into, you know, mediocre habits, whatever they end up being, you know, and it's never too late to start a new habit or to do something different. Um, and I think, you know, when you're going through a struggle or you're trying to change a behavior, and we know this in the security industry, if you try to change a user's behavior, it's like, you know, pulling teeth, right? Um, you know, get them to use multi-factor authentication or to do this or to do that. So, you know, we have to educate ourselves, but, um, you know, I always say, you know, positive energy creates positive energy, right? And the more positive energy or good karma that you create, the more karma you help other people with and vice versa that, that's reciprocal to you. 
you know, uh, if you surround yourself with just toxic folks that are always negative and always down on you and all you hear is negative and your job is negative and everything else, you come home and it's negative, you know, you're going to be a negative person. It's just going to be how your, your worldview or your perception is of things. So, you know, surrounding yourself, especially in the fitness journey with a community that, that can help you and to support you from a positivity perspective when you struggle, I think is, is very paramount, you know, um, I'll go in the channel, you know, a lot of times and I'll just see, you know, like, like there's, there's one guy, gosh, he's like 167 pounds and he's deadlifting 600 plus, you know, uh, pounds. I'm like, geez, oh Pete, like, how is that even possible? Like, that's awesome, man. You know, more power to you, but that's like, you know, that's, that's inspirational to me. Right. You know, and, um, it's, it's, it's Morty's prime on, on discord, you know, and I'm just like, I'm looking at his, his deadlifts. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's inspirational to me. And, you know, he's there, you know, spreading his successes and, you know, and it's just motivational stuff like that. That's really important. Jocko's, you know, Jocko Willink is another great example where, you know, every day he posts a picture of his watch of him waking up at like four thirty in the morning. First of all, screw that. Um, but second, you know, like him putting the work in, he motivates others, right? You know, putting motivational pieces around you regularly can really help continuously motivate you. And I think, you know, that, that's one of the things I always mention about personal trainers is that, you know, I didn't have the accountability for myself to make those habit changes, uh, you know, to, to have somebody that could motivate me. And, and, and Ben, you know, my struggles throughout this, this process, it hasn't been pretty, right. You know, I mean, it hasn't been a perfect success story by, by any, any shape or regard, you know, there were days where I'm like, man, I don't feel like I'm making any progress. And you're like, dude, here's you day one, here's you six months from now. It's a completely different person. Look at that. I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm stupid. You know? And, and then I move on. Right. You know? And so, you know, and, and, times where you're like, Hey, we're going to push calories. Hey, we're going to cut calories. We're going to do this. I wouldn't have done that. You know, like I wouldn't have had the comfort zone to be able to get out of my own personal self to be able to push myself to those types of limits. So, you know, having somebody by you, um, having somebody that supports you, if you get your family involved, you know, my kids now, um, you know, are, are in a healthy lifestyle type of thing. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, they still have Sprite and soda here and there, you know, but it's in moderation, you know, but they, they're wrecking. They said, this. Did you tweet that they wanted to lift with you or train with they you? Did, yeah. Like, yeah. So Gavin and Mason are like, hey, right Dad, dad moment. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, listen, if you can't, if you, you're not a lot of my gym, if you can't bench, you know, over 250. So, you know, but uh, <laughs> get over the fence. This is your way in. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. No spotter. We're good. <laughs> but uh, no, think, it was cool. Uh, that was cool. Yeah, it's good, you know. That, and again, that's that's why we do it. And I think, you know, what you're talking about, that guy, you know, they're lifting six hundred pounds or whatever else. Like, I think this this comes down to a mindset and an attitude thing. Um, you know, you can look at that one of two ways. You can look at that in the case of, you know, that's motivational. Like, fucking hell, I wish I could do that. Or some people will be like, well, fuck that guy. You know, probably X, Y, and Z, or this is why he can do that, and I can't do it. And it's that's why we focus on on mindset and attitude first. And I think. You know, if there's a way that you can, and this is something that I think that I've developed over time, and, and this is something that I always give myself credit for in terms of being able to offer perspective. And I was actually thinking about this before we came on the call. Over time, from obviously this job and previous job, always working in sort of like, you know, public facing roles or always dealing with people. I feel like I've learned a lot about people. Obviously in your job, you need to know a lot about people, potentially in a different way than than I do. But you know, it's it's about learning about people and, and like behavior patterns and why people do things and having an understanding of that that I find fascinating about people. So, you know, I always find that I can give good perspective on things. So if somebody comes to me with a problem, I'll always give them another perspective to look at. And it's generally nine times out of ten, it's appreciated. And that's something that I, I do give myself credit for at being quite good of good at. Um, but I think if you can, if you can look at a situation and just sort of take a step back and give yourself a different perspective on it and sort of think, right, okay, you know, just reframe it and come back to yourself and, and see it in a more positive and a better way. Now I get that, that, you know, it potentially is easier said than done, right. but if you make a conscious effort to do that more times than not, I definitely think that, as you said, you know, if you're always surrounded by negative people, if you're always dealing with negative shit, then you're going to be that it's going to rub off on you. Like you're a product of your environment. And I find over time that. Unfortunately, there are just people who, you know, they almost create that value in themselves about being that negative person, yeah. whether it's, you know, they fucking hate so the like job, persona, that right? person. Yeah. Yeah. So their, their persona is that they are that person or, you know, they, I don't want to say, well, fuck it. They're going to say they, they play the victim and, and that's how they get their attention. And that's how they create their person. You know, they're always sick or they're always this. So they're always that. And that's how they create their, their person. And they never do anything about it because that's where they get their value. And that's where they get their, their connection from other people. And 
that's you know that's their choice ultimately and and you can't sort of you know there's not a lot that you can do that and i think that you know recognizing people they need to want to change themselves so actually dominic our one commenter on, on youtube um he helped me with something the other day and he's a funny character and he was like he only likes to help people who are willing to help themselves and i think that that's birds you know i mean like some people just yeah. aren't willing to help themselves and that's fine and you know a conversation that, that we've had before about you know people that they automatically whenever they get a coach or they pay money or they join a gym they, they expect the work to happen but if it's a case of they have to actually go and put the own, their own work in they're not interested because they feel like they've you know they've taken somebody on board or they've went into a program or whatever it is and they think because they've done that that's their step to helping and they don't want to actually make the change themselves or they don't want to put the fucking work in because any sort of change is hard if you have negative habits or if you have negative behavior patterns there's going to be a lot of resistance a lot of friction to try and come out of those as a person which is understandable and you need to be willing to do the the hard work and i think that this will take us full circle back to discipline equals freedom if you have the discipline to put the work in now and go through the hard times and deal with the shit and you know put the work in on yourself and understand why you are the way you are why you deal with situations or don't deal with situations in the way that you do then you know, it will give you that freedom down the line to to live a different life or be a different person or understand things a different way. Well, and that might be a, a generational thing too. I think um, in some cases, you know, uh, you look at at a lot of the it, we run into this in the business side of the house where, you know, let, let's just take let's just take fitness out of the equation and you go into something like college, right? Okay, so let's just say you're going through a cybersecurity college degree, and you know, you have an instructor that's very proficient with what they're doing. They're teaching the material. But you're at you're in class sleeping, or you don't go to class at all to learn the topics yourself, or put the work in to understand the topic. Okay, so you end up failing out of college. Well, is that the professor's fault or is that your fault? Right? You didn't put the work in to understand the topic to go and do it. Conversely, same thing. You know, we we get a lot of candidates that you know are coming through. Like they're like, well, hey, I'm just coming out of college. I deserve this, and 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 I'm like. No, man, you, you, you know, whether, you know, whoever you are coming out, you know, you, you have to earn all of this. Like this is, this is, you have to work to get to this. Right. You know, and, and, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that we don't take care of our folks or that we, you know, don't try to give them a great salary, you know, when they're coming out of college, you know, or, or try to help, you know, people coming out, you know, that's, that's all things that we, we, we help on with, but you have to want to work, you know, to make yourself successful, whether it's your career or your life or your family, like, if you just ignore your kids all day and you ignore your wife all day, well, they're probably going to leave you and they're probably going to hate you as a parent, right? You know, because you're, you're neglecting them in every single way, shape or form. So you're not going to be a great parent. So you have to do things to put the work in, to make those changes, to make things a positive. And, you know, it's like, I, I got into this a little bit on, on social media years and years and years and years ago, um, especially when I ran this, I ran this conference uh, called DerbyCon. And, you know, this was when social media really started to get like super toxic in, in every way, shape or form, right? You know, just like real bad, you know, instead of it being a collaborative platform where you're sharing things and stuff like that, it became more of an attack platform and putting people down and, and that type of stuff. And, you know, that really impacted me personally uh, because I hadn't seen it before, right? I, you know, I was doing all the right things and, and trying to take care of folks and everything else. But then you had a small fringe group that was just super bad and, and obnoxious and ridiculous and all this other stuff, you know, just throwing stuff at us all the time. And, and you know, it impacted me personally, right? Um, you know, you know, I, I went home drained, you know, I didn't want to do the conference anymore. None of us wanted to do the conference because we we're just getting shit on from some stupid people. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where you're like, well, at the end of the day, like, who, who you know, and, and what, what it took me a little bit of time to realize is who who cares about those people? Like, like, they're obviously very unhappy in life. They're obviously extremely negative on everything in life. And it's not just us. It's everything in the world, you know, that, that is, that is their issue. And I feel, I feel sorry for them. You know, I actually feel compassion for them and that they're, they're in such a, a, a deteriorated state in life that, you know, they, they get, uh, you know, get, you know, excited about messing other people up. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I, I had to drop those types of folks uh, and just say, they're not worth my time. Because it's impacting me personally. Like I, I, I try to exhume positivity throughout there. I don't post negative things. I don't post politics. I don't even understand what's going on in politics anymore. I don't even watch the news. I don't care. I don't even care. You know, like I, you know, it doesn't consume my life in any way, shape, or form. I, I focus on what I can change. I focus on helping others. I focus on charity. I focus on making people better. Um, that's my whole desire is to make the world a better place, right? And, it, and if you don't fit in with those beliefs. 
that's fine. Like, and if you don't fit in with, with, you know, being a, a positive person, that's fine. I'm just not going to associate myself with you or communicate with you or interact with you because you're going to bring me down. And that's really worked really well for me um, to get out of that rut that I had with struggles is to just surround myself with positivity, ignore the noise and really focus on the good, positive things that are happening out there because there's so many good things that are happening out there that, you know, really, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are negative things and there are things that we have to address and there's things that, that we have to fight for and things like that. I, I fully understand that. But, you know, there, there's, you know, I like living by love, living by, you know, good, good, good friendships, you know, living by helping people out, things that I know I can change. And so for me, overcoming those struggles are really important to me to surround myself with those types of people um, and to get and to cut the negative people out there were just batshit crazy um, and really focus on, you know, the important things in my life that that really made sense. I think the I mean so many things that you put that you touched on there that I was like yes I need to talk about that but the main ones are and I deal with this quite a lot whenever somebody comes to me and they're like oh you know I've dealt with this person either online or in person and they're saying this and it's X Y and Z and blah 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 exactly what you said it's it's that person's problem and not yours so you know they're unhappy they're jealous they're X Y and Z and that's why they feel like they need to try and bring others down and people who need to bring other people down to better themselves can fuck right off. I just can't, I just yeah. don't have time for them. It's like, go and do whatever you want, but just, you know, I'm not going to interact with you and that's fine. The other thing you said about a generational thing, I think this is quite funny. And I, I chatted to Matt about this recently, and I don't know whether it's just like at the tail end of, you know, people who are just coming in slightly younger than me. And it's like, everybody wants to be a fucking entrepreneur and make millions and millions of dollars and pounds, but nobody actually wants to put the work in. Everybody feels like they deserve X, Y, and Z. And it's, as you said, you know, they come out of college and they deserve these 10 things and they have these list of demands and nobody's actually willing to go and put the fucking work in and earn it and put the time in and put the hours in. And obviously, you know, we spoke about that whenever we had the, the conversation with Matt, like you, him and I are probably very similar in the fact that we're willing to go and put the work in. And sometimes it is difficult and, you know, we have done in the past and that's why we're in the position that we're in. And, you know, obviously it's on different scales and whatever else, but we're not afraid to put the work in. Whereas some people just want it handed to them because they feel like they deserve it because they're a pissed off, you know, 20 year old or whatever. And that's, you know, and that, that's the types of folks that you, you're not, you're not gonna be able to help. But at the same time, like if you're in that situation and you want to make a change again, surrounding yourself with positivity, and wanting to put the work in, I think, is is really important. Again, we're talking about small changes here. And if you if you didn't listen to our habits podcast, I'd really recommend going back. It was a few episodes ago um, where we talked about creating small habits that equate to large large things. You know, I'll tell you the three habits that have been extremely important to me, and I've mentioned these before in previous podcasts. But these are things that that are non movable for me. They they are things that I do not have a choice in. Okay, that that means that that that. I will do them religiously, and if I don't, like I punish myself mentally and everything else because I broke this habit. Okay, so so I just it actually just doesn't happen because I, I focus so much on this this these three things. So the number one thing is is if I have a workout scheduled, I don't miss that workout. Okay, so like even if I just go there and I break a sweat and I feel like I don't want to go, well that's actually my second rule. Um, so if I don't want to go there, uh, and, you know my my rule is. You know, let's just say I'm not feeling great or I'm feeling sick or something like that. Obviously, if I have COVID, I'm not going to go work out. Let's go work out at my gym uh, downstairs. But, um, you know, I, uh, I, what I do is, is I have this rule of, okay, well, I, I, I'm going to make a conscious effort to go to the gym to, to get a workout in. And, and if, I, if I still feel like crap after I break a sweat, I can leave, okay? And I've never left. And, and I don't believe it. There's many times where I'm like, I'm just going to go break a sweat and leave. Um, and so, you know, number one, do not miss a workout. Number two, if I'm not feeling it, just break a sweat and then go leave. And then number three is logging all my calories in my fitness pal, right? You know, those are the three habits that I will not falter on period. Uh, those are like, like things where if I'm grabbing a whiskey, I'm going to my phone really quick before I pour that whiskey. And I say, I'm adding whiskey into the, my, my fitness pal. And then I pour the whiskey and then I drink the whiskey. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the methodical habits that I have built that are immutable. I, they, they will not move. They're, they're formed into my, into my patterns of hair, just like brushing my teeth, just like taking a shower or changing my underwear. These are things that I will do. Now, it doesn't mean that my workout schedule can't change. Maybe I go down to three week, you know, three days a week or five days a week, which is not going to happen, but just hypothetically, you know, um, one of those things, right. Or I decided to do orange theory. You know, they're, they're a great example. Um, the last week, we got hit with a huge snowstorm, uh, and Monday they canceled Orange Theory, which obviously I can't go and do Orange Theory then. 
So, you know, I went and got my lift in. Like, no, I'm doing it anyway. I'm coming. <laughs> Open the place up. I'll be oh, there. It's I a got, Monday. <laughs> I got lock picks. I'm good. So let's go. I'm, I'm going to teach myself. <laughs> but uh, you do it all on three, two, one, go. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, by myself, they're sitting there. <laughs> you know, the odor comes like, what, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, this is awkward. Uh, you know, but, uh, it's a Monday. It's a Monday. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, you know, what I did is, is like, listen, I, I don't miss workouts. So I booked a workout for Tuesday, right? And I went Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday to get my workouts in to ensure sure that I didn't miss my schedules of what I had promised myself that I would do. So it's, it's those types of habits and those solid pillars that you kind of build off on, but those took time, you know, like, like my fitness pal is, is I think an easy one that you can bite off on. Like if you say, I'm not ever going to eat something or put anything in my mouth until I log it in my phone, that's, that's a, that's a good thing to start as a habit, right? Because now you know what you're eating, what you, what you don't need to eat, what you want to put from a, you know, a, a macro perspective of what you have from a protein, carbohydrates and fat perspective. So, you know, those types of things can make big differences in changing your habits and, 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 and structuring you towards the right way to get better with what you're doing. Yeah. And it does, it does come down to habits and every sort of change is just small changes over time. Like you can't literally decide and wake up one day that, oh, I'm going to do this differently and my entire life's going to be different, but with the right environment, with the right people behind you and with the, the right sort of habit building, I think, you know, you can literally do anything. And I know that that maybe seems so far away from a lot of people, but I think if you put your mind to it, you want it bad enough and you commit to the thing that you say you're going to do, you can literally achieve anything. And I think one of the things that, that I've sort of realized over time when I'm talking to people and whatever else, that number one, as I said, you know, the way that you speak to yourself and, and the sort of the, the affirmations and the positivity that you give yourself and actually back in yourself to make the change and do whatever it is that you want to do. The thing that sort of overrides it is, people are capable of whatever they want to be capable of. If you're not willing to do it, you don't want to do it. You're never going to do it. If you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you're never going to do it. But if you have the right reasons to change and make a difference to yourself, your life and the people around you, if you put your mind to it, you have the right environment and the right tools to do it. You can literally achieve anything, whether that's changing your mindset, changing your mood, changing your job, changing your financial situation, changing your weight, whatever it is. If you fucking put your mind to it, you can do it. And being able to sort of believe in yourself, I think is a massive thing that that's overlooked. And I, one of my uh, posts I remember doing really early on in my career that got quite positive feedback was, if you don't believe in yourself, you can't expect anybody else to. And I realized that again, that's probably quite easy for me to say at this point, but there was a lot of times in my career, both, as I said, with training and, and with work as in coaching that I really didn't. And, you know, whether it was a case of, you know, I didn't want to post on social media because, you know, what if this person read it? And what if that person read it? And, you know, what if people start picking holes in it? Fuck all those people. You just have to go and do the things that you want to do and, and believe in yourself to get to to where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all awesome stuff. And, I, and listen, you know, to, to wrap things up on the podcast thing, and I also want to talk about one supplement that I'm really, really excited about. Um, but I actually thought this just before. I was like, should we have a weekly review of our favorite supplement of the week? <laughs> we don't have enough time. That would take an hour by each by each of us. So. <laughs> but uh, no, um, uh, listen, we, we all have struggles, right? You know, whether it's work, whether it's, you know, family, whether it's a death in the family, whether it's, you know, what's going on with COVID and, and the situations there, you know, there's a lot of, of stressors that we have day in and day out, and, and there's no question about it. And, and, you know, to say that our stressors aren't as important as others is, is bullshit, right? Our, our stressors are our own stressors, uh, and, and those are important to us, right? So, so how do we motivate ourselves to make those changes so that we don't have as much stressors in our life, whether that's a change of jobs, you know, which can be a stress in itself, right? Short-term stress for long-term gain, hopefully. If you're not happy in your job, you don't feel like you're making progress, go somewhere different. Make that change. Make that plunge to do something that you're happy with. Ben, you had that story last last podcast around, you know, yeah. how you got into being being a, a personal trainer. And, you know, it, it's it's doing those those things that can help you get out of the struggles, which I think is really important. And then I'll talk yeah, about myself. I think, the, again, again it's a choice. Do you know what I mean? You can choose to continue to be unhappy in your job and complain about it every fucking day and be miserable and everybody around you be miserable because every day you complain about your job or you can go, do you know what? I'm going to go and find another fucking job because you know, life is a lot like it's worth life is worth living. And if you're unhappy in your job, which you spend a high amount of your, your time doing, then it's something that, that definitely needs changed. And I think one thing to sort of note on obviously with global shit show going on, like at the start of it, it could have went one of two ways for me with coaching because obviously, you know, the majority of my business was face to face and I could have totally shit the bed and not been able to sort of transition online and whatever else. 
but because I was mentally strong, because I was physically strong, because I have the discipline and I have the sort of positive mental attitude that I can change and adapt and whatever, I was obviously able to create an online business that, you know, is now, is now better than ever. So that's one thing that I'm thankful for that the training and the discipline side of things has given to me that, you know, I know that no matter what happens, I'll be able to adapt because I'm mentally strong and I'm, I'm resilient because of the things that I do on a daily basis to sort of back that up. Absolutely. Hey, we all go through struggles. We can all power through them, you know, make those habits and changes. And if anybody wants, like, I mean, and you're the same, you know what I mean? If yeah. anybody's going through something and they want just someone to talk to, like shoot us a message, Twitter, Discord, whatever way you want to communicate. Like I Absolutely. realize sometimes it's easier just to, to actually talk to someone. Yep. So I'm really excited uh, about this one, something really quick. Just just one minute on this one, which is uh, the Redcon 1 RPG got stuff. 60 seconds, go. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. so I'm, I'm kind of pissed because like I paid for like the premium shipping and it's still not here, but it gets here finally today. Um, and I've been waiting for this one. And what I really like about this one is I've done a lot of research on it. Um, and, and the primary ingredient is what we call berberine, which uh, has been shown to it's, – it's, it's heavily used for type 2 diabetes – um, and, and reducing the impact of glucose and insulin release in your body. And so uh, this uh, the supplement from Redcon 1, uh, which we're not sponsored by, the way, I'm just really excited about this this thing. It's a it's a glucose disposal agent, which basically should means be. we should be. Oh, you see, I'm so pissed that you got that before me. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but what you do basically is you take, you know, four pills. You can take up to eight pills a day, but four pills 30 minutes before you eat a high-carb meal, Okay. And what happens is when you, you know, when you eat a lot of carbs, you know, it spikes your, your insulin levels and glucose is then deployed to, to your body to help regenerate, you know, muscle fatigue, things to that effect to your fat cells. And so what happens is when you don't use excess amounts of sugar, i.e. what turns into glucose, um, you, your body stores them as fat. So what this does is it's, it's more of a slow release of the glu glu glucose that fo focuses on replenishing your muscles but then doesn't allow it to be essentially transported to your fat cells. So basically, you know, you're not going to be storing excess carbohydrates um, as fat. So um, it looks it lo looks to be a lot of great science behind it. Uh, long term use is 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 uh, um, been proven to be safe and effective for at least a six month to to over usage for that. Uh, you know, minimum impact to liver, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, uh, one of those things I'm looking forward to trying and and getting onto that one too you know, eat a whole bunch of, of candy bars, you know, and, but, but taking those pills 30 minutes before, just kidding, obviously. But, you know, my high carb meals, especially after I get done working out, you know, pop four of those pills, wait a little bit, eat a high carb meal, you know, and that high carb meal, and then it's going to be replenishing my muscles. But then the rest of it as a byproduct isn't going to be stored as fat. So, you know, I know I, I eat a lot of oatmeal at night. I'll probably use it right before night and then use it uh, for my main post-workout meal um, as I go through and do it for, to, to be in that eight pill limit. So not to add any more pills that I do on my 70,000 other pills that I eat. Um, but uh, I'm kind of excited about getting this one. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a sucker for email marketing from Redcom one and they get me all the time and that's how I've ended up with this. But yeah, I have it as my, I have it 30 minutes before my post workout meal with two actual gallon the tablets to get me back into that rest and digest it. And it is just about nutrient timing and nutrient partition and being able to uptake the nutrients as optimally as possible. Um, so yeah, we recommend. And my cupboard is becoming more and more and more Redcom one as they, they make send great stuff. emails all the time. I'm like, Ooh, but I like, I just think it's a cool fucking brand. Like they I are. like it. I get it. I understand it. You know, it's consistent. I like the, the objective. I like the suggestion you say, like everything about it. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. If they want to sponsor us, if anybody's listening, just hit me up, email <laughs> info at bc.trainer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's wrap right for our podcast this week, everybody. And by the way, we're getting some great feedback from folks that they, they want us to move to a two podcast a week format. I don't know if that's going to happen, but they can't get enough of us. Uh, each well, week, we're going to do, we're going to do spaces. We'll do spaces yeah. once a month. We'll set a date for that and we'll do spaces because yeah. I think that'll be a bit more interactive um, and we'll potentially do a Discord night. So you will get more of us. You just need to be in the right places for it. That's right. Well, hit us up on on, on uh, Spotify, Apple, everything else, uh, Discord, uh, Hacking Your Health, Twitter, We Hack Health. Um, you know, hit us up anytime and, and share in, in your successes and your struggles. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a fucking awesome week. <laughs>